Welcome everyone to the Lightning Lecture on Cosmos DB. My name is Glenn Stevens. I'm one of the trainers here for Xamarin University. I'm going to take you through basically an introduction to Cosmos DB and how you can get used to it. So just a little bit of a history of where I'm coming from. Actually, years ago, I developed an app that had to scale, and it had to scale at the application server level, and it also had to scale at the database level too. And back then, this was actually close to 99, uh, we didn't have, actually have the scalable options that we have today. We had to essentially we had to essentially do our own sharding mechanisms for a small startup at that particular time. I didn't have the, the team to manage it and develop it too. And there was also only three developers, and I was the only one that actually had a clue about infrastructure. So we developed a system, and it did work, but we had to fight against the tooling we had. We were on call, and we were worried about what would happen when we scaled as well. And the application worked. Uh, like I said, I was on call. I had swipe card access to the data center, and it wasn't really a good situation to be in as a developer. But since that day, I wanted to, since those days, I actually wanted to have a solution that would scale at the application server level and also at the database level so I could get the level of control I wanted. And this is actually why I'm excited about Cosmos DB. It's a NoSQL database that gives you amazing scalability, single digit millisecond queries, and for us mobile developers, direct and speedy access to the database, as well as what I consider something really essential for a mobile backend, and that's geospatial support so we can perform location based queries. In this lightning lecture, we're going to look at what you need to create a Cosmos DB based application and then connect your application to it. So what is Cosmos DB? Well, Cosmos DB is an enterprise ready NoSQL document database as a service that runs on Azure. So when we're talking about documents, we're actually referring to JSON documents and, and not Word documents. So JSON is a really widely popular option for databases these days. So if you look at things like Couchbase and CouchDB, they're similar document structure storage, but NoSQL is a widely popular option here. So also I want to mention that you may have also heard of DocumentDB. Now Cosmos DB is the next evolution of DocumentDB. So if you see documentation online that refers to DocumentDB, it's also referring to, to Cosmos DB as well. And Cosmos DB has a number of benefits that are really useful. Uh, there's rich query capabilities that you can execute over code. It also has very fast speed, uh, very reliable performance, and also allows for the rapid development of applications using most tools. Now, obviously, for today, we're going to be using C Sharp, but like most Azure technologies, we also have support for other technologies too, like Node or PHP and a range of others. Cosmos DB is also a great mechanism for running on web and mobile apps. And from the mobile apps perspective, it is amazingly fast. In fact, many operations run in single digit millisecond time, and it certainly feels a lot faster than any other cloud-based database I've used before. And because we're running it as a document store, there's also no schema, so it's really easy to add additional columns or document types where you need them. Now there's also native support for JavaScript, uh, transaction support, stored procedure support, and in a strange and, and wonderful way, you can also execute SQL over your NoSQL database. And uh, we'll take a look at that a little bit later when we look at querying the database. The first thing we're going to look at today is actually creating a database. And we're going to assume that you have an existing Azure portal account. You can see my portal account on the screen here. Now it is going to take some time to create the database. So we're just going to go through the, the process of creating one together. So I'm going to hit new. That's going to bring up my list of options. And if I scroll down to databases and scroll down a little bit further, here we can find the Azure Cosmos DB option. So I'll select that option, and then I can enter the details about the database that I want to work with. So what's going to be the account ID for this? Let's call this um, Cosmos Lightning Lecture. I'll just do it AOL. And I can choose an API. I'm going to choose the Document DB option for this one. Uh, for the subscription, I already have one. I'll create a, a new resource group. I'll call this Cosmos LL again for the Lightning Lecture. And I've got my location here, and I'll just pin that to the dashboard too. And that's going to create the database. And the database creation process does take a little bit of time. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll probably pause the screen and come back when it's finished. Um, otherwise, you'll probably just have a, a few minutes of silence. So now our Cosmos DB account has been created. And you can see it's taken us directly to the quick start. 
Now, although we have a, a Cosmos DB account, we actually don't have any collections or databases. So there's a few concepts you need to be familiar with with Cosmos DB. Collections are really the document stores. So don't equate them to tables. They're actually not tables. They're really just a place where you place documents. So you can store whatever kinds of JSON structured data that you need there. And collections can also store stored procedures, triggers, and user-defined functions as well. We won't actually be looking at those in today's walkthrough though. But it's mainly that the collections can hold your documents, which is really where your data lives. The first thing we need to do is to add a collection. And, and this is going to be the simplest method to use the, the quick start here. So I can create an items collection in my Cosmos DB account. Let's go ahead and, and click that. And that's going to create the collection for us. It won't take too long for this to occur. And we can see it's been created as well. And that's actually pretty nice. And like most Azure services, you can find on the left-hand side a number of, of mechanisms to actually explore that service in more detail. So for example, if I scroll down here to the Document Explorer, I can actually see all the, the documents in my items collection. I actually don't have one in there at the moment. The collection has actually been created. So I can create a, a simple one. Here's my, my document. You'll notice that it actually needs an identifier for the document ID. And I'm going to call this uh, mine. And it's just a JSON document. I can put some, some details in there. Let's call that first one name. No Glenn Stevens. And I might put an item type, for example. And I might just call this one contact. And it's got my name, and that's certainly fine. I can save that document. Now I could also create a, a new document as well. And this document, I'll give this another one. This will this might be a car, for example. And I might set the item type to be to do item. Something very simple. And then I might actually add some other entries in there. Um, so I'll add a notes. And the notes actually might be an array, and I might have a, a number of things. So I can basically create whatever structure I like within this database. It's highly flexible. And, and often you'll find that the collections don't mirror the, the tables concept. They just really indicate a store. And you can define essentially whatever columns that you want to use for your, for your storage. Or in fact, these are uh, essentially the, the, the key names. Now, I'm going to delete these documents just for the time being because one of the nice things you'll find about the, the Quick Start is that the Quick Start gives you the ability to actually use that as your own application. So I'm going to select the Quick Start, and you'll notice because the items collection has been created, I can navigate over here to the, the Xamarin tab and then actually download and run a, a Xamarin app that's automatically linked and set up to connect to my items collection. So I hit the download option, I can see the document DB Quick Start Xamarin and click on save. And that's going to download that service for me. I'll just open that up. Extract the contents. And open up the solution. So let me just open that in Visual Studio. And it should pop open in just a second. Now one of the things you'll find about this template is that you will need to update the, the NuGet packages for it as well. I'll just do that now. It just needs a, a newer version of Xamarin Forms. And then we should be able to just run it as is. Okay, so now the packages have been restored. And if I open this up, you'll actually see that I've got a, a to-do item manager within my code. And this is actually what is essentially the, the database client to our Cosmos DB account and our particular collection. So you can see we're connecting to our particular key and the particular URL. So this is our instance, the Cosmos Lightning Lecture, and we've got an account key. So that account key actually comes from the key section here within Azure. And I'll just click on that for a second. And you can see things like the, the URI for the, the collection, the, the read write keys. So these primary keys and the secondary keys, they can be used to read and write to the database. But you could also embed read only keys into your application as well so the, the, the mobile clients can only read that data. We'll talk about security in just a second but there's also some connection strings but from the mobile app we just use those main three. 
like you can see. So our database ID, our collection ID, our account key, and also the account URL. And within this particular class, you'll notice we've actually got uh, a few packages added into it. In particular, it's the Microsoft Azure Document DB dot core. It's actually there's another one which is Microsoft Azure dot Document DB. That's not the one you want for mobile. You want the dot core. And in particular, it's got the the ability for this particular class, the document client, and that's what actually connects us up to 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 Cosmos DB. And if we scroll through here, we can see a lot of this is really about setup using the account and the account key. But if we look at the actual members of this implementation, it's actually really quite simple. So if we look at our get to do items async, we've got a particular class here, which is our model class. Let's go to that declaration, which is to do item. It's got an ID and a text and a complete, which is a Boolean, a very simple structure. And if we look at the items, for example, we can see when we're getting those queries, we're actually creating a document query of to do item and we're passing in the collection link and our maximum item count and we're also applying a filter here so we only want the items that are not yet complete and then return that as a document query what you'll find as well is that when you do the queries you actually won't get all the results back you actually have to iterate over the results so often you'll you'll follow this particular pattern where you'll create a list of those particular items and then while you're iterating through the query and getting the next batch of results you'll add those results into the items collection and it's the items is and the items is actually what you return. So that's the the common case for document DB queries. And we've also got an insert operation here you can see as well where we're inserting a new to do item into our collection. So here we're creating a document async, we're passing in the collection and we're also passing in the item as well. Now there's also a concept called the partition key within Cosmos DB, which is pretty important. And the partition key is, is very useful when you're doing user-centric apps. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. But uh, in some cases, if you've set up a partition key, you'll also need to use the other options as well. So you can see this request options, you'll need to create an instance of that and provide a partition key if your collection has a partition key defined. So then we're assigning the, the items here and just adding that into the collection. And that's actually quite nice. And likewise, this helper method here, the complete item async, it's getting the item, it's updating the, the state, it's setting the complete, and then it's replacing that document there as well. So and then it's removing it from the collection so you don't see it in the list anymore. But that's a, a nice, simple example. If I go ahead and, and run this, we should see the, the app running and connecting to our Cosmos DB instance. Okay, so here's the, the app running. I can create a new item, get milk. I'm always running out of milk at home. I'll add that in. That's added into the Cosmos DB. Another to-do item would be get stamps. And pick up kids from school. So the classic to-do items. And they're all communicating with uh, the instance of a Cosmos DB. In the back end and it's kind of interesting as well um, I've been talking about how fast Cosmos DB is and it's actually operating really fast here I have to confess that where I'm actually doing this recording from I'm actually in a very rural area connected to very slow internet um, via satellite so uh, if I was in my normal office this would actually be significantly faster um, but even just using it it's still very fast if I go back to uh, my Azure instance and I go back to the, the Document Explorer, I should actually be able to see all those items there. There's the Get Milk, there's the Get Stamps, and there's the Pick Up the Kids from School. So all those queries are, are running nice and effectively. And likewise, I can, can select an item. I can complete it, for example. That gets deleted from the collection. If I go back to the Azure instance and, and refresh it, I should only have... Um, two items here. Actually, I've got three items, but it's the, the item is now marked as complete. So that's a, a, a good demonstration of that speedy access with DocumentDB. The, the speed is an absolute delightful feature. Now, also, one of the other things I want to mention is that one of the things about Cosmos DB that's really easy is to actually query the data. And there's the capability to use link 
to query the data, you would have seen that in the the client code we've got here where we've got the, the document query. So we're using the where to filter the items and returning them as a document query. Um, and there's also other options as well. There's the ability to query on JSON and also SQL query. Although the, the SQL support is not the same as you might be used to for something like Microsoft SQL Server or Azure SQL Server. But it's also very comfortable for many of you too. And one of the nice features about Cosmos DB is that the columns are actually all automatically indexed by default. And this means that your queries are, tend to be really fast too. So if I pop over to the Query Explorer for a second, and which is just below the, the Data Explorer, I can actually do just a, a simple database query here. Select star from items, run that query. And I can just say where complete equals false. I should get two items. Whoops. Cool, that's a little bit better. And you can see that that query come back as well. And there's also some additional information about that as well. So you can see here there's actually attachments in the, the document query. Each document has the ability to have attachments associated with it as well, which is a very nice feature indeed. Now, one of the things I, I thought I might show you as well is what I consider one of my favorite features of Cosmos DB, which is the geospatial support. And mobile applications actually use a lot of location-based information. And if I wanted to search for a particular spot, I could use the geospatial pieces of information within my document to specify points. For example, if I go back to one of my other um, Cosmos DB instances, this one, this is an app that I'm, I've been writing called Piggyback Rides, which is really just dem demonstrating some location-based searches. And if I look at the, the Query Explorer here, and I'll go into my Crips collection, and run that query, then you, you should actually be able to see um, some of the the geospatial bits of information. So I've got to pick up location property here, and it's a type of point. So Cosmos DB actually supports the geojson points, polygons, and lines um, that I can use in my structure, like this, where I'm defining points, and also for for queries as well. So I've got my select star from trips, but I could also add some options here as well. So here you can see I've got a, another query where I've got my select star from trips t where the, the distance from the pickup location and this particular location which is Luna Park which is a popular a popular theme park in Australia is less than 50,000. I should really only have the one entry here which is something at Sydney Opera House. So it's doing those location based searches. Now I just want to run back to the Azure portal just for a second to show you some of the the other aspects that are very useful when you're working with Cosmos DB. So some of the things that you might be needing to use when you're using Cosmos DB, at least from the portal side of, of things, is you'll need access to the URI for the, the actual account itself from time to time. You've got uh, other additional information. You've got other additional pieces as well, like the Quick Start. The Quick Start is a really useful resource. If you ever find that your configuration is slightly out, I find actually downloading the, the quick starts will normally give you the, the right details for your configuration as well. We've also got the Data Explorer, which is in preview, so you can look through your collections and, and items and have a look at the, the documents and, and see, see what's in them, update them as well. You've also got your keys. So these are the, the read-write keys as well as the read-only keys. That's very useful to, to work through. Uh, in fact, let's actually talk about the security model. In fact, the security model for Cosmos DB really has a number of options. So there's the master keys that you can see, like the read-write keys and also the read-only keys. And they're available in the portal under this section here, the keys. Now, you can also use these keys within your app securely, of course. So I would most likely, if I was doing an app, uh, I would tend to only deploy the read-only keys within my app. But keep in mind that even if you're deploying the read-only keys, that gives the, the user of the app permission to read 
any of the, the items within that collection. Now, there's also another way you can set up the database, which is through the use of a resource broker. Now, essentially the workflow is that you would need to authenticate. And once you have a user identifier, you would connect to the broker. And then the broker would give you permission to access a particular resource. Uh, we'll actually look at this in a follow-up lightning lecture. But just scrolling down the list as well, often you'll you'll need to, to browse the collections as well. So you can select your collection and have a look at the particular collections in there as well. You've got the the scale, and this is actually an important feature of Cosmos DB. You can actually implement the, the scaling policies. I've got it here at 400, which is the minimum, but you can scale this quite a lot and actually replicate this throughout other regions. So in fact, the, the replicate data globally option allows you to specify where you want your data to be positioned. And you can see where it's positioned currently, which is South Central US. But I could actually just add another instance, for example. Uh, I'm in Australia, for example, and I could probably replicate that to, to one of the other services, maybe Southeast Asia, for example, and then save those changes. So if you have a, a lot of users using your service, you can actually scale up on a global scale, which is really quite amazing. I'll leave that <laughs> as is for now. And of course, you've got your settings. I'll leave those, those changes there. You've got your document explorer, which you can use to, to basically look at the documents that are already in your collection. You've got your query explorer, which allows you to, to query the, the database directly. There's also the script explorer, so you can create things like stored procedures and triggers. I could create a stored procedure. It gives you the definition for it. And you'll notice that the stored procedures are actually all JavaScript. So the, the stored procedures are run on the same instance that your Cosmos DB is running on. We won't actually run the, those stored procedures for today, but in case you're interested in it. These tend to be the main things that you'll use just from an admin point of control with Cosmos DB. So that's our look at Azure Cosmos DB. So when you need to make a, a cloud-based mobile app that's fast, flexible, and supports a lot of great features for mobile developers like security, uh, as well as geospatial support, please, it's worth checking out. And there's really just a lot to enjoy about working with Cosmos DB. And hopefully this inspires you to check it out and see how it works within your system. So thanks again. Uh, my name's Glenn, and I hope to see you on some Xamarin University classes.